impunity, sheer dishonesty, barefaced hypocrisy, in compassion, as displayed by this incumbent government over the past six years and more. And then, um, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, the task ahead is formidable, much more than it was four years ago. I, when people ask me, what, you know, what, why are you doing this? Let me explain. I remain inspired by the fact that as a people, we have faced terrible situations before. Check our history. Please don't begin with the Fourth Republic or the struggle for independence, although these are also important milestones. Go hundreds of years back. In those hard times, our forefathers and our foremothers too did not throw up their arms in despair. They fought back. They resisted. They sacrificed. They persevered. They brought back hope when there was none. pieces of a broken people and carefully and strategically sold them back and they left for us a legacy of selflessness of true patriotism and pride it is our responsibility today to leave something better for the next generations giving up is not an option we must all soldier on. Across the political divide, across social and professional groupings, among the youth, you hear complaints and stories concerning state capture, where this government has chosen to use its power, not in the broader interest of all Ghanaians, but to favor a small clique. What is that? agreed that whoever has participated in the plunder of the state must be held accountable. And my friends, this is not a threat, it is a promise. It is a promise which is premised on the wishes of our citizens across the political divide and it is hinged on the principle of accountability. Let us face the facts. Today what do we hear? It's a promotion of ethnocentric elitism which is masquerading as intellectualism. Ladies and gentlemen, it is elitism masquerading as intellectualism. It is weakness strutting as courage. And crony capitalism must as development in freedom. It is shameless hypocrisy pretending to be objective. This will never move our country forward. Rather, the most significant achievement of all these has been a country in their insolvency. Its natural resources such as water, land and even the environment in rebellion. A people harassed and intimidated into numbness and as some will say cynically, some of us also bribed into silence. I 
envisage a report on the administration of His Excellency John Dramani Mahama on the ticket of the NDC in his reign 2013 to 20, early 2017. I now bet that the report will have no reference to the following. A multi-million dugout. I don't know about you, but the image I get looking at that hole is a trench in utter shock that anyone could believe it was intended as a thanksgiving gift to the almighty, invisible, God only wise. You will not find in this record a free SHS at war. The battle fought on the grounds of food, shelter, space, even calendar, teaching and learning materials. Or those who spend a couple of weeks in school and many months at home just idling by. You will not find past questions instead of textbooks and science equipment. You will not find an atmosphere that suppresses learning. You will not find free water and electricity to a few that has turned out to be most expensive for everyone. Such a report will not find COVID money shared for partisan political campaign purposes. And all of this done when people were dying and they needed just a little bit of help. You will not find in a STEM an Japan like manifesto. you will not find him as president clearing malfeasance and writing love letters to prejudice a bad situation. You will not find that unemployment jumped from 8 to 14 percent and actually check the figures, check the actual figures, go beyond the percentages. And you will not find a debt to GDP that has gone a war, or a city that refuses to be tamed. <laughs> Under his tenure, you will not find weak efforts to hide the truth of Doomsock. <laughs> the reports will not include scandals surrounding the PDS, Australian visa, Kelding JVG, most contaminated fuel, excavations, and aboboya tricycles that can fly faster than unconfirmed. <laughs> Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, you will not find unfulfilled promises of one village, one dam. One million dollars per constituency per year. 350 secondary schools from scratch. And two, too many betrayals and too many instances of disrespect. You will not find in his time a tracker too embarrassed and, uh, and gone into hiding because it is too afraid to expose its plagiarized content. In truth, such an investi investigation of his term would not reveal over 100 scandals and still counting. What will the report say about the NDC under John Dramani Mahama? After exhausting the list of clinics, hospitals, medical centers, expansion of existing universities, polytechnics turned technical universities, brand new universities focused on current and projected national needs. You will find the Mahama schools, popularly called e-blocks, and you will find these constructed from scratch. You will find that there was a debilitating shift system. And that it was painstakingly and effectively abolished. 
and effectively abolished. You will find that the ratio of textbooks at the primary level moved from one book to three children to four books per a child. This is a leader you can trust. This is a leader who has the love of the country at heart. The, the report will highlight new roads, harbors, railway lines, not what we've seen of late, Ayalolo buses. You will find the lack of intimidation of opposing voices. You will find serious investment and practice to, to enable a digitized economy and society. The report will go on to point at housing projects including the famous Saglemi housing complex. And even those that somebody has happily raised to make room for a presumed for a, a presumed cathedral. You will find that journalists were not hounded into exile. Should I add more? Okay. The report will find that once upon some years ago, the blame for power outages was placed at the doorstep of the President and the Minister for Energy. The report will find a President who saw the energy crisis that he inherited and a Minister, and a minister who did resign on principle. The report will tell of a timetable for load shedding provided to respect the dignity of citizens and acknowledge their right to plan and also to learn the truth about our situation with energy. The report will contrast their existing arrogance and leadership with that of the respectful JDM who builds the children and youth by offering lasting skills quality education, serious adaptable training, who opens up the economy to create more space for jobs and self-actualization. The report will highlight a JDM who does not line up desperate young people in the heat of the tropical sun to march and salute him as head of state for jobs that have no head, they have no tail, they have no future. The report will explain the foundations of the principles of the policies of the NDC. That they will see that the NDC strives and thrives on consensus building from observation, study, analysis, vigorous debates that tolerate all views, to an agreement on the options at hand and end with well thought out implementation plans. The benefits of such approach inure to everyone. They inure to nation, they inure to community, they inure to individual in that order. The report will highlight going forward the critical processes that will lead to innovations and flexibilities of the brave timely, intentional intervention of a 24-hour economy as proposed by H. E. Mahama after consulting widely with stakeholders and citizens across the country because he respects everyone. I am not surprised at all that many labor groups, businesses and individuals have embraced the concept. It is a vision anchored on the firm belief that the right policies and with the right policies and incentives in place, we can, we can inspire a new generation of enterprises to adopt a multi-shift work system and wider participation in the economy, thereby ushering us all into a new and golden era of Ghanaian industry. And by the time the policy is in full flight, a couple of years down the road, we should not be surprised to see how
from the vegetable seller to the miner, from the smallest hamlet to the crowded cities, from the farmer to the fisher folk, from the young couple to the single parent, everyone will come and see and apply the benefits of the 24-hour economy for national, for national group and individual advancement. Please come join us in our hall meetings, in our town hall meetings, and other programs to learn more about this incredibly effective strategy. Do not fall victim to those who have realized that having failed in sloganeering and packaging, that they have exhausted all their strategies and therefore result to the deception and destruction. We are particularly pleased to see, as evidence in credible polls, that this visionary policy has caught on and resonated with the public, especially with our young people. Where are the youth? Are they here? The policy is for you. So please come and learn more about it. I know for a fact that the nation builder, Don Mahama, who is not an economist, will deliver this economic model. He thinks through what he does. He thinks through what he says. He considers advice. He is confident enough to amend his views when confronted by working alternatives. He does not rush with decisions that have serious effects on the lives of others. John Mahama does not shoot from the hip. A 24-hour economy. A 24-hour economy will demand that we pay special attention to skills training in Sanwe Juma. And that is why we are serious about continuing with the critical reforms and the improvements we made under his tenure in our technical and vocational training institutions to ensure that we equip our youth with the technical skills necessary for a thriving economy. In San Rejuna, Ejuma also means equipping our youth with tech skills so that they are ready to participate in our economy and in the global remote economy. So, as we mentioned several times, as we mentioned several times during the 2020 campaign, we intend to implement the One Million Coders program which set an ambitious but attainable goal to train over a million of our youth in coding, data science, and other tech fields. The potential for this pool of young people to contribute to Ghana GDP is enormous, and inshallah, it shall happen. Definitely, another important area and why this position is important and why the NDC has prioritized it. We will pay special attention to issues and challenges faced by women in all walks of life. Oh, the women are not happy. And the men too. This is part of the reason we propose extended maternity leave. In line with one of HE, of His Excellency President Mahama's 2020 election promises. And in the 2024 manifesto, the flexibility offered within the context of a 24-hour economy must hold special attention for women, for obvious reasons. Maybe we should meet and have a long discussion on that one. Women entrepreneurs must have access to capital. 
for the entire sector to boost their businesses. And that is why we will actively pursue the establishment of a Women's Development Bank. To primarily nurture and grow women-owned, women-led businesses. Women must become millionaires too, shouldn't we? We must become millionaires too through.